Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about two diseases within dental genetics, periodontitis and tooth decay, and how to delay them and prevent their onsets. First, we will begin with predict predictive genetics and then talk about the genetics and pathogenic risks of periodontitis. We will move on to the genetics of tooth decay and finally end with how to perform a genetic study of both of these diseases. Predictive genetics is the branch of medicine focused on determining the probability of the occurrence of certain diseases and providing adequate preventive measures with the objective to avoid the disease. When the disease cannot be avoided, at least delay its onset or diminish its symptoms. Every method to predict genetic dis diseases is based on genetics, genomics, and DNA studies. We can know our genetic background to change our habits in order to prevent diseases. The progression of knowing, changing, and preventing is the basis of predictive medicine. There are two types of genetic diseases. Monogenic diseases occur with a single mutation in a single gene and cause a particular disease. However, they are rare. We see these diseases on the left. The more common diseases are multifactorial, shown on the right. The genetic component is polygenic because there are many genes involved. Each gene has a different change or mutation, and it is the combination of different mutated genes that will cause the specific disease. The environment may affect the pathology of multifactorial diseases. The most recurrent multifactorial diseases on the general population are represented on the right. Among them are cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, obesity, and periodontal disease. Multifactorial heredity is like playing Russian roulette. The black numbers are like the genetic factors, while the red numbers are like the environmental factors. The more we bet, the more chances we have to suffer, suffer from the disease. It is multifactorial hereditary. We need the effect of the genes and the environment to actually block the disease. Periodontitis is a periodontal disease where progressive gingivitis causes inflammation and infection of the ligaments and bones that support the teeth. This disease is a leading cause of tooth loss in adults. Tooth loss is not only limited to natural teeth, but it can occur with expensive dental implants as well. It is not so common in children, although the disease increases with adolescence. There are certain genetic risks that may predispose a patient to the genetic disease, but it is an also an infectious disease. Genetic risks are due to hereditary factors that affect the, affects the patient's inflammation and immune response. They are associated with a higher susceptibility to develop severe symptoms of periodontitis, with the possibility of losing a tooth or an implant during the maintenance period. Periodontitis is an infectious disease caused by bacterial pathogens, known as periodontal pathogens. The pro-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-1, known as IL-1, is a local inflammatory mediator of the immune system, a key regulator of the patient's response to microbial infection. When IL-1 is overproduced, hyperactivation of osteoclast occurs, causing aggressive resorption of bone tissue. Therefore, certain variations of IL-1 genes are associated with an increased susceptibility to more severe symptoms. IL-1A and IL-1B are genes that code for subunits of IL-1, which are IL-1-alpha and IL-1-beta, respectively. ILRN is a gene coding for interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. The human leukocyte antigen, HLA, also influences the expression of periodontal disease. 
HLA is responsible for the regulation of the immune system in humans. There is an association between HLA, DR4, and the rapid progression of the disease found through a study where the gene was present in 38% of healthy patients and 80% of patients with progressive periodontitis. HLA DR4 is a gene coding for a subunit of HLA DR, a MHC class II receptor. What types of patients is this test recommended for? Adults that are diagnosed with aggressive periodontitis, especially those with those who are resistant to current therapy. Also adults who have family history of periodontitis with the IL-1 risk genotype. Why should one undergo the test? The objective is to treat the patient based on personalized treatment based on his or her genetic results. Also to prevent periodontitis in an individual or family member who don't know they contain the genetic risk. Periodontitis and periimplantitis are infectious diseases caused by periodontopathogenic bacteria. Periodontopathogenic bacteria destroy endogenous tissue and cause inflammatory responses. In the end, these pathogens are responsible for resorption of bone and loss of teeth. In the event of periimplantitis, inflammation of the soft tissue leads to bone resorption. This causes an implant to become unstable and in the end even to fall out. The bacterial load is the same as the one that causes periodontitis. The bacteria that threaten the natural teeth also affect implants. Early diagnosis and testing for pathogenic bacteria is also very useful for dental offices placing dental implants. Elimination or significant reduction of the pathogenic bacteria can can enable greater clinical success with dental implants. Bacteria responsible for periodontitis are oblig obligatory anaerobic species with black pigmentation. The exotoxins produced by those species are directly related to the persistence of periodontal inflammation and increased loss of tissue support. A targeted and successful periodontal treatment requires eradication, if not substantial reduction of the bacterial load. First, the species, the specific periodontal pathogen must be identified, so the correct medications can be administered to the patient. With this very direct approach, the periodontal pathogens are eradicated, ensuring long-term success. Due to extreme individual variances in the composition of the subgingival plaque, a targeted therapy can only be achieved by analyzing the individual bacterial load. Knowing the composition of the bacterial load enables the creation of an individual therapy strategy with minimum use of antibiotics. Pathogen analysis enables choosing the most appropriate medication and help avoiding inefficient therapy or even treatment failures. The inclusion criteria for this test includes adults who are diagnosed with aggressive periodontitis, especially those who are resistant to current therapy. And why should one undergo this test? The objective is identifying the bacterial pathogens to administer effective pharmacological treatment for the prevention of periodontitis. Also to prevent periodontitis in an individual or in family members. Tooth decay occurs when the tooth enamel is fragile with abnormal crystal structure, resulting in a rough appearance, discoloration, and inclination to break. This is due to many environmental factors, such as nutritional deficiencies, metabolic defects, infection, and trauma or genetic causes. A patient can have a general predisposition towards tooth decay, which involves a DLX3 gene. DLX3 is a gene coding for homeobox protein DLX3, which plays an important role in craniofacial patterning and morphos morphogenesis. Amylogenesis imperfecta 
is a tooth disorder of altered formation of dental enamel. Dental abnormalities due to this pathology include complete absence or aplasia or partial absence, known as hyplasia, of enamel formation. Hypomineralization in hypomaturation and lastly, discoloration in hypocalcification. Amylogenesis imperfecta is an autosomal dominant disease, so therefore a child has at least a 50% chance of obtaining the disease if a parent has the gene. The types are classified through the dental abnormalities present in their inheritance pattern. Therefore, the varying types are associated with specific genes. Type 4, which results in torodontism, is associated with a DLX3 gene. Type 2A results in hypomaturation. It involves an MMP20 gene that goes from matrix metalloproteinase 20. Trichodentoosseous syndrome, known as TDO, is an ectodermal dysplasia that causes defects in hair, teeth, and bone. TDO can be characterized by curly or kinky hair, enamel hypoplasia with discoloration and torodontism, and increased general bone mineral density. Increased general bone mineral density. TDO is also associated with mutations in DLX3. The protein coded from the DLX3 gene is involved in morphogenesis. TDO is mostly an autosomal dominant disease, so once again the child has a 50% chance of inheriting the gene if a parent is affected. Who is this test for? Children are highly recommended, but adults displaying changes in tooth enamel color and bone mineral, bone mineral density, hypocalcification, or formation of holes and grooves in enamel are also recommended. Why should one perform the test? The objective is to treat the patient based on personalized therapy, based on the genetic results, and also to prevent tooth decay in a young child, adult, or family member who is unaware if they contain the genetic risk. Now the process of the genetic testing will be explained. Oral mucosal cells, or a saliva sample, will be taken for the genetic test. This includes the genetic test for periodontitis and tooth decay. We will receive a package containing a tube with a cotton swab, which we will break the security seal of and remove the swab without touching it. Then we will insert the cotton swab into the mouth of the patient and rub up and down on the interior of the cheek for at least one minute, pressing firmly. Two samples or swabs are taken per patient, one for the interior of every cheek, or each cheek. The sample will be placed into the protective tube, which will be labeled with the patient's full name and sealed with the tape. In order to detect periodontopathogenic bacteria and some gingival lesions, a sample of bacterial cells must be taken. A sterile paper, paper strip is introduced directly onto the bottom of the gingival crevice in order to ensure the sampling of aerobic bacteria or facultative anaerobes. Between one and four different samples of some subgingival plaque can be taken, always avoiding contact between the paper strip and the saliva or oral mucosa. Samples of gingival crevices that are bleeding from a previous test should not be taken. The paper strip is then placed into a sterile tube and maintained at room temperature. This is a summary of the general protocol. The specialist will receive the patient in an initial consultation, where the patient will be taken and a request form is filled out for the genetic test. The physician will send the sample to Hanika by mail, where the test will be performed. Hanika will send the results to the physician through email with a password. The doctor will share the results with the patient through a second consultation where they will provide recommendations. Undergoing a dental genetic test is easy and painless. 
It is convenient because it can be done as a, it can be done during the consultation. It is unique. Genetic results are valid for life. It is innovative. It is a new tool for the specialist at the forefront of technology. It is familial because the results may prevent periodontal diseases in relatives. Lastly, it is effective because it applies a personalized treatment based on an individual's genetic results. So thank you for your attention today, and I hope this information was of interest for your clinical practice. Prevent today to avoid periodontitis and tooth decay. With the end of this presentation, we will take five minutes to answer a few questions that we have received. If there are any more questions, you can contact Clarissa Neal or Teresa Perucho at their emails, which are shown on the slide. So now we will move on to the questions. So first question we have received, how do we take a sample for periodontitis risk? The test is done on a saliva sample taken by grabbing the inside of the cheek with a cotton sterile swab. The only preparation of the patient is to have a clean mouth at the moment of the sampling and avoid eating and drinking at least one hour before the sample. Um, another question that we've received is, how often is it recommended to repeat the test to the same patient? There's no need to repeat it because the genetic test uh, because it is a genetic test, the result is valid all along the life. If a patient changes to another dentist, they should show the genetic report of, result, of the results to their new dentist so the treatment can be adapted based on their genetic predisposition to, to develop periodontitis. Um, okay, and another question is, what age is required for a dental genetic study? Uh, for example, a tooth, de tooth decay risk. It is a genetic test, so the results do not um, vary depending on the age of the patient. The objective is to prevent severe symptoms of periodontitis and quality loss of dental enamel. So the sooner we do the test, the better the specialist can apply preventive measures. And these tests can be done on young children. And our final question is, uh, to whom is it recommended a genetic test to evaluate the risk of periodontitis? It is typically indicated to people suffering from aggressive periodontitis as well as their result relatives in order to, invo to avoid the onset of the condition. So that concludes some of our questions, but thank you again and we look forward to hearing from you.